Good evening. Good evening. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We gather on this holy Wednesday in the season of Lent. We uh, reach the the middle of the book of Lamentations tonight. And uh, in both Jeremiah and Lamentations, when you reach the middle of the book, uh, you reach a special place. Uh, The the nuggets and the the joy and the comfort in the gospel. So uh, we arrive at uh, the middle uh, this evening. But uh, chapter 3 of of Lamentations uh, begins with uh, Jeremiah saying, I am the man who has seen affliction. Uh, I am the man who has seen affliction. Words that that apply to Jeremiah, that apply to Jesus, uh, but also that apply to us. Uh, That theme is picked up in our opening hymn, hymn 451. Thank you.
Psalm 22, uh, another portion uh, this evening starting at verse 23 of Psalm 22. We read to the end of the chapter, uh, we read responsively verse by verse. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him and stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he is not despised for the Lord, and he does not give his face to him, but has heard and cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will perform before those who fear him. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before you. of the earth eat and worship. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, even the one who could not keep himself alive. They shall come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn that he has done it. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Sides. The 
Lamentations chapter 3. I am the man who has seen affliction under the rod of his wrath. Skin wastes away. He has broken my bones. He has walled me about so that I cannot escape. He has made my chains heavy.
baby boy was born, Thomas Obadiah Schism. He didn't go to high school or college, but finished elementary school, and at age 16, became an elementary school teacher. Later, a newspaper editor. Finally, at the right old age of 27, God in his grace and mercy called him to faith. He'd grown up in Kentucky without the Lord, without Christ. After he'd come to faith, he started to write poems, Christian poems. He wrote during his life over 1,200 different poems. In his 50s, he sent a batch of some of the poems he liked the best to a musician. And this musician was impressed with one particular poem and set it to music. That poem, Great is thy faithfulness. A hymn that um, was sung, to introduced to much of the world um, at a Billy Graham crusade when George Beverly Shea sang it and uh, has become well known ever since. Great is thy faithfulness. It's a hymn of, of hope and giving God thanks and praise for who he is, for his steadfastness, his faithfulness. And yet, as you know, um, it's an unlikely book of the Bible for this hymn to come out of. Lamentations. Believe me, there are not many hymns that come out of the book of Lamentations. Most of the book is written speaking about the afflictions and the sufferings and the desolation. Jerusalem has been destroyed. Jeremiah is distraught. <clears throat> but in this five chapter book, here in the middle chapter, and we've talked about the first two chapters, how they were acrostics, 22 verses, every verse uh, with a different letter of the Hebrew alphabet. But in this third chapter, he does a triple acrostic. He does three verses with the comparable A and three with B and so on, all through the 22 letters of the alphabet. And at the very center of this third chapter, great is thy faithfulness. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. In the midst of, of the desolation that Jeremiah felt, all the ways that, that he was afflicted, he is reminded and speaks these great words of hope. If you've been reading through the book of Jeremiah, you know some of the afflictions that Jeremiah has faced. He's been thrown into prison more than once by his enemies. Other enemies have been plotting his death, and it's only by the intervention of God that his life is even spared. Jeremiah not only has the hard task of calling the people to repentance who will not repent, but a people who will not receive his word, who get angry and upset, who throw him into jail. I suspect the verse that, that we read tonight, um, he has broken my bones. I suspect that was probably literal. Uh, Jeremiah's bones broken by his enemies. He is afflicted, plotted against. And yet he writes, Great is God's faithfulness. As we have said, as Jeremiah wrote, he was not only writing about himself, but under inspiration of the Holy Spirit, his words apply in all kinds of ways to Jesus. 
Jesus, too, was certainly afflicted, verse 1, certainly under the rod, beaten, seemingly in darkness, without any light, as he hung on the cross, forsaken by God, God's hand turned against Jesus again and again, walled about, blocked my ways with blocks of stones, walled me in, I cannot escape, my chains are heavy. Jesus on the cross, afflicted, By your sins. Your sins, their punishment, afflicting Jesus on the cross. It wasn't just those Romans, it wasn't just the Jewish leaders, or the people passing by, or the unrepentant thief that afflicted Jesus, but you, my friend, and I, caused Jesus' afflictions on that cross. My soul remembers. My soul is bowed down. The wormwood and the gall. My soul is bereft of peace. And yet, as Jeremiah wrote, there was hope. Jesus, at the end of his time on the cross, says, it is finished. And then what? Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. When the suffering was done, Jesus commended himself into the Father's hands. What a joy, what a relief for him. And so, my friends, the afflictions that Jeremiah faced, they prefigured the afflictions that Jesus faced. And Jesus himself tells us, thirdly and finally, that, that we should not be surprised that we too must take up our cross and follow Jesus. That because Jesus went the way of the cross, we too should expect persecution. We too should expect trials and troubles. We too should expect to be afflicted. Some of us have managed to get through most of our life without too many afflictions especially compared to much of the world. But there are others among us who have seen more than their share of afflictions. Some bearing afflictions right now. God does not promise there will be no afflictions, no troubles, no crosses for his people in this life. In fact, just the opposite. We will indeed have crosses and afflictions. But in the midst of that, in the midst of that darkness, Jeremiah speaks his word, my friend, to you. This I call to mind, therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Therefore, I have hope. Hope, my friends. Hope. Hope. Because of Jesus. Because of his afflictions. Because of the cross. We can say, great is thy faithfulness. We have hope. We know a God whose love and mercies never end. Who will see us through all the afflictions of this life, no matter how they end. He 
Because then they will. Even if it be on the day of our death, then for sure our afflictions are gone. And just, just as Jesus commended himself to the hands of the Father, so, my friends, he commends you into the Father's hands. We are safe with him. We have hope in the midst of all the afflictions of life. Jeremiah afflicted. Jesus afflicted. No surprise that we are afflicted. But in the midst of our afflictions, which unlike Jesus we deserve because we are sinners, in the midst of it all, a great hope, a great promise, a great Savior, a wonderful cross, the steadfast love of the Lord, my friends, never ceases. Great is His faithfulness. And that, my friends, is the way to this, this third week in the season of Lent in the year of our Lord, 2016. In Jesus' name, amen. We say again, first verse of our sermon hymn. Yeah. <clears throat> of our Lord according to Matthew the garden of Gethsemane and when they had sung a hymn they went out to the Mount of Olives then Jesus said to them you will all fall away because of me this night for it is written I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered but after I am raised up I will go before you to Galilee. Peter declared to him, Though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go yonder and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed, My Father, if it be possible, 
let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, for the second time, he went away and prayed. My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, thy will be done. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking a rest? Behold, the hour is at hand. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a great crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, And he came up to Jesus at once and said, And he kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, why are you here? Then they came up and laid hands on Jesus and seized him. And behold, one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place. For all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my Father? And he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels. But how then should the scriptures be fulfilled that it must be so? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and gloves to capture me? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But all this has taken place that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. So far the passion of our Lord. We bring now our offerings to the Lord and also ask that you would sign the friendship register uh, the red folder in your pew.
turn to page 233 for our prayers. Um, following the singing of the Kyrie, we will sing the Lord's Prayer. Uh, the words are printed in your worship folder. We rise. Give to us your servants that peace. 
peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all.
We are looking for some uh, volunteers for our Monday Thursday service to help portray the disciples. If you're interested in that, uh, please let me know. Also, uh, next Wednesday for the soup and sandwich supper, um, it will be entirely by volunteers. Um, we didn't have a lot of people signed up earlier today, so um, if you're able to help uh, next week, that would be great. Uh, the last two then after that will be taken care of uh, by our youth group, along with uh, Judy Moeller, who's going to bring some short sour uh, the last Wednesday night. Uh, then finally, um, the funeral service for Junior Sigelski, as most of you probably have heard, is tomorrow. That's tomorrow morning at 11 uh, here at Emmanuel. And uh, I don't know if there's anybody here who this would work for or, or not, but um, we are uh, we don't have anybody to run the, the video or the DVD recorder for uh, tomorrow morning. If anybody would be interested in doing that um, or in uh, uh, ringing the bell for the service, I'm looking for people for both of those. Um, let me know afterwards. And the Lord be with each of you and uh, keep you in his care this coming week. Mm -hmm.